Welcome to another room of the Fripp compound, as <laughs> Lois Bookmore Business Kramer likes to call it. Usually when I have webinar jam or Zoom meetings or Facebook live meetings, we do it from my front office where I have the San Francisco backdrop. But based on slight technical difficulties that we will not bore you with, I am now in my back office as this is a very casual just for our Facebook live group. Uh, it's, I think it's OK to be a little more informal and perhaps you would like to look at some of the details of my back office. It looks down at the garden and this is where I come if I want to build my PowerPoints or write my speeches or be more creative. And one very important piece of memorabilia that if you were at the convention the year that NSA rocked, which was in New York, Marc LeBlanc was our president in the opening general session. He slid on stage just very much as Tom Cruise had done. And it was incredible. And I, I said, I'll give $250 to the foundation if I can have that photograph. And it turned out they put the price at $200 and there were a group of us that bought it. But I keep my, mine on display. <laughs> also, as you know, or perhaps you don't know, but you should, my persona is Wonder Woman and I have a custom made Wonder Woman costume. And in this office, we have some of my Wonder Woman memorabilia. And here's, <coughs> I would like to say it's me, but it's a Wonder Woman doll. Anyway, enough about that, just why a few people are coming in the room. Our main reason for being here is to listen and learn, whether you're live or whether what you watch the recording, that's fine. Lois Bookmore Business Kramer. And specifically, this is about one aspect of her book, and she has a wedding to pay for in California, so you might want to buy her book. Honestly, it is a very good practical read and many even seasoned CPAEs keep it on their nightstand or in their office and open it wherever you open it, you, you get some pithy points. But Lois, you know, I am going to start at what you consider is the most important part, which is on page seven. But please welcome to our group and give everyone a snapshot of how you got to be as smart as you are to be helping speakers be able to book more business. Take well, it away, Lewis. First of all, thank you for having me, Patricia, and thank you for shilling my book. Let's sell them all we can today. Yeah. Um, this is actually a fundraiser, folks. It might seem like an <laughs> infomercial, but it's a fundraiser. Yeah. Um, Actually, I started out after college in uh, corporate sales and marketing for United States Steel Corporation, a, a small mom and pop here in the, in the St. Louis District Sales Office. And um, uh, the phone rang one day and it was the it was the adoption agency saying my daughter had arrived. Mm -hmm. So I left U.S. Steel never to return to stay home to raise my daughter and got a call from a speaker named Shep Hyken, who was given my name. And Shep and I talked. I had never even heard of speaking as an industry. Um, he sounded uh, nice. He said, would you go out to lunch with me? And I said, yes, but I don't think I'm your gal. So we went out to lunch. We talked. Of course, I started the next week. <laughs> he's a great salesman. <laughs> he is. He's, he's a consummate salesman. And so I say really that I learned this business at the feet of the master. But I, I also learned by doing. And um, I got my first breaks nationally by doing some, uh, National asked me to do some breakouts for staff people at some conventions in the mid 90s. And then in 98, I went out on my own. And it's 19 years now, I can't believe it, almost 20. 
And um, so that's how I that's how I got started. And if you reflect on all that time working with Shep and then on your own, uh, the subject of page seven, which is the first action we should all as speakers take or I would suggest when you are in your business a long time, you should reflect because perhaps it's time to change your positioning statement. So one, our first action should be begin with a positioning statement. At what point in that career did you come up with this is the first step and then tell us how to do it? Well, you know, it's it's interesting, but I have built a business really based on helping you answer the question. You as a speaker answer the question, what do you do? Yeah. Because too many speakers, when they're asked that question, answer with a topic and say, I speak on sales or I speak mm -hmm. on leadership. And I think that's a missed opportunity because really people don't buy by topic. Typically, they want to buy by results. What kind of takeaways will you give people? So that's why I developed a positioning statement, which is really not a definition of what you do. And it's not an elevator speech. Um, I say it should be seven seconds or less. Uh, I think that if you're a professional communicator, you should be able to capture someone's interest with one sentence, a concept and outcome sentence instead of a topic sentence. Hmm. And for example, I'll give you my positioning statement. My positioning statement is I work with speakers who want to book more business, make more money and fully monetize their intellectual property. Mm. And notice, I didn't say at all how I did what I do. I didn't yes. mention a vehicle. I speak, I consult, I write, because I don't want to at first. I want you to, to think about the concept and outcome of what I do. And eventually think of the number of ways that we could engage each other. Um, when I first started uh, started out, I spoke on sales to some corporate sales teams, yeah. and I did that under the banner of fast forward selling. Mm. And my positioning statement for that was, I work with organizations that want to fast forward their selling skills, mm. so they'll be more successful at what they do. Good. Good. Again, not topic, but concept and outcome. And I didn't mention vehicles. So typically with a with, with a good positioning statement, you you will feel equipped to answer that question. And typically when you when you give your positioning statement, someone is going to say, how do you do that? And then you talk about the vehicles that you use to drive your intellectual property to the marketplace. I speak, I write, I consult. Um, I want them to consider uh, I want every client of yours, every prospect of yours to consider that you're in the intellectual property business, not merely a speaker, because that's when you can really get a deep dive with someone and work with them in a number of ways and become even become a resource to them instead of just a mere speaker on a platform for a one and done opportunity. So that's why I think positioning statements are incredibly important. It's also the, uh, I use it when I'm leaving a voicemail. If, if I were trying to get Patricia, I would say, and I got her voicemail, I would say, Patricia, my name is Lois Kramer and I work with speakers like you who want to book more business, make more money and fully monetize their intellectual property. I'm sorry I missed you today, blah, 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 blah. Good. And Good. it's the signature of my emails. It's the signature on my blog post. It says copyright 2018. Lois works with professional speakers who want to. So it's your everything. Mm. It's your everything. And, 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 Paul, I, and Paul, yeah. Paul is lurking in the background. Uh, Paul, I'm hearing a little echo with me. Uh, but if anyone wants to type in their position statement, let Lois know and she can critique it. Be happy to. Good. 
Give us a couple of examples of what works, what doesn't work. In other words, people said, oh, this is mine. I've already worked it. And you said, no, that's not good enough. Yeah. The um, one of the most common pitfalls when creating a positioning statement uh, is people will send theirs to me and they begin by saying, I help. Mm -hmm. I help organizations or I help people. And I say help is a very benign word. We work, we get paid, we get what we do, what we do. So don't use the word help. help. Don't use the word teach. teach. Teachers are underpaid. We don't want to teach. We want to work. Mm. And organizations is just um, mm. inclusive language. Um, if you target market, which I highly recommend, you might want to say, um, I work with organizations in the financial services market who want to blah, 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 blah. Um, but one thing I, I did want to, uh, I did want to mention Lots of times people make their positioning statements too long because they're trying to put their bio in a positioning statement. And that's a big mistake because when you do that, I think we're assuming too much interest at first blush. And we want to answer questions as people are interested. So you don't want to make it too long. And really your uniqueness doesn't come in yet with a positioning statement. Um, your uniqueness comes in as you have your, your sales conversation with a decision maker. But if I were approaching someone cold, I would say my name, my positioning statement. I'll use my sales. I work with organizations that want to fast forward their selling skills so they'll be more successful at what they do. And I'm reaching out to you to see if one of my programs might be a good fit for an upcoming meeting. That's kind of the transition sentence, why I'm reaching out, your call to action, your name, your positioning statement, and your call to action, why you're reaching out to them, why you're connecting with them. And that works whether you're doing it in person, whether you're sending an email. That's also the template I suggest to my clients when reaching out to someone by email, name, positioning statement, why you're reaching out uh, to get a conversation to qualify someone. So. A positioning statement is everything, and the shorter, the better. You want it to be repeatable and memorable. That's, That's very good. good. I especially like, and Paul, Lois, can you hear me echo, or is it just me? Fine. No, I don't hear it echo. It just All takes right. a few seconds for Lois's noise canceling to catch up, so you're good now. All right, thank you. We're good. For those of our members who don't have a lot of business and don't know what to do, your template for your email is a great way, if you've got your positioning statement, yes. to actually reach out and send someone. Would you then, would you put a link to your website? That's, that's a great question. I'll tell you what I do. I suggest to my clients that they attach a PDF of your one sheet. And, and this is why, and this is one of the reasons why I say one sheets are incredibly important uh, tools still. I think a link to your website, my experience is a lot of people just won't go to your link. Mm. Plus, I want to manage the perception. And I have limited amount of time. So I look at a one sheet as the kind of the macro look at my business, the 30,000 feet look at my business, um, the core things that I offer, my core offerings. And so that's what I want someone who I'm reaching out to at first blush to see what my core offerings are. And a uh, great one sheet has the who, what, where, when, and why of you really. And um, so they can see your core programs and it's a it's a great thing to add. You're not asking them to do any heavy lifting mm -hmm. on the email. But what we're trying to get is a conversation mm -hmm. because to fully qualify somebody, you have to talk to them. You can't do it by email, though. Lots of people try. But 
you're you're really wanting to get a conversation in an email, just like with a sales letter. I'm 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 hoping that I can have ten minutes of your time. And uh, I always say give two options on Thursday or Friday afternoon, something like that. Hmm. All right. Now, if you had selfishly picking your brain, multiple services, keynote speaking, executive speech coaching, sales presentation skills training, would you have a separate one sheet for each of them? Or would you have the authority on presentation skills with the three categories? I would have the three categories. Hmm. Um, I think that uh, I think that what what and I, I can't imagine who you were talking about in that example. <laughs> well, uh, I don't mind admitting I like free advice <laughs> from my guests as well. Oh, well, the clock's ticking for you, Fru. <laughs> um, but for everybody else, what what the one sheet does, really, what we want ultimately the one sheet to position you as an expert in your area of engagement. So just as you said, Patricia, the authority on. Hmm. And you might even want to say on a one sheet for your positioning statement, you might want to open it differently. You might want to say, I work with people who want to. Hmm. Because that covers large groups, individuals, small groups. Um, so I work with people who want to. Okay. All right, good. Now, uh, Paul, are there any questions or statements that we need to acknowledge before I go to my next one? We do have two positioning statements. All right. First one is Stuart Harris, and he said, and his is. He's a troublemaker. Scotland. Yay. He joined the group just to listen to you. Oh, so yeah. it's only fair we and it's late at night with him, so it's only fair we take his. I agree. All right. So um speaking as him, I work with businesses that need to win more customers, serve them better, and keep them longer. Mm. I like it. I um uh, far be it for me to uh criticize Stuart this late at night. <laughs> um I, I, I like it, Stuart. I wouldn't change a thing. The, the the only thing I would uh, the only suggestion I would offer and um, it's fine the way the way you wrote it is if you work and, and you do work with associations, you might want to say organizations. It's just a more inclusive term. It covers businesses as well as associations. And for most of us in business speaking, those are the two worlds kind of that we live in. So you might want to say that. But, you know, I like that. And I, you also uh, did something that I did, uh, Stuart. You kind of used the power of three mm. on the uh, takeaways. And that's an old marketing thing. Anybody who ever took a business marketing class in college learned that, that it's, the, it's the power of three. It's, it's very effective in writing. I think it's effective when speaking if you can make it short. Yeah. If yeah. you can make it short. But I like your Stuart. Boy, am I relieved I can say I like it. All right, good, wonderful. Then we have Rita Romano, who actually created this video, I believe. And hers is, I work with organizations that want to adapt an innovative approach that will increase productivity, positivity, and potential. Well, I have to say I love that because I worked with her last month on it. So, so I think it's wonderful. It's the best thing I've ever heard, Rena. The best thing I've ever heard. <laughs> but and so we actually had one more come in as we were talking, David Odie. I work with scientists and engineers who want to know how their work will change the world. Oh, that's interesting. Mm. Um, and I, what is on your new book, David? I just received it in the mail. Come back from my last trip. Thank you. I like it. I'm wondering if. If it's it's kind of you know I'm I'm thinking off cuff here, I'm kind of wondering if we might want to narrow that end whether that might be too broad, but I kind of like it that way. If you're going to change it at all, and you don't have to, um, make it a little bit more narrow, a little bit more declarative at the end of it, instead of change the world, change the world how. Mm. So that they can blah 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 blah. Mm. But but I like it. I you know 
I have found that for most business speakers, the people who hire us are looking for really four main things. They're looking for us to increase profits, mm -hmm. increase productivity, mm -hmm. increase employee engagement, or mm -hmm. increase shareholder value. Those are really the the four thing, the four takeaways, main yeah. takeaways that people want. They're hiring you as a speaker to move the needle, to ch give them a tactic, a technique, an idea, a strategy to change behavior. That's why they're bringing you in. And I think if you can address what behavior you can change, and I've found that that they're looking for change, immediate change. So they're saying, what can you do for us that when my people walk out of this meeting and go back to their desks, they can do differently as a result of hearing you? If you can answer that, you're going to have a good money, money statement, a money in the bank statement. All right. Well, like David, I work a lot with engineers and engineers if they're talking to other engineers they speak a certain language what they have to do is sell their ideas up to organizations so they have to simplify it and and sell the outcome of their projects to senior management so perhaps and i don't know what the words are because i could probably use them as well david would be and Paul, read the beginning of David's positioning statement. I work with scientists and engineers who want to know how their work will change the world. Okay. Uh, how or how about who want to communicate their impact? Well, this with with the scientists, it might, it would impact the world. But with engineers, it would impact somehow that it would impact the bottom line. Ah. Uh, you know, it, it also yeah. it also could be that he might want to say, I work with scientists and engineers who want to learn how to communicate in plain English. Yeah. Or want to go from geek speak to yeah. You know, you have to you want to be clearly understood by the majority of people you're yeah. trying to communicate yeah. with, I think. Yes. Now I, I'm assuming that you would also suggest we test it. So for example, if you yeah. sent out a hundred emails and so well three people replied, you might change the language. So for example, D Dave, uh you might change the world or it might be do something a little different with the end and see if you got 10 yeah. responses. Yeah. You know, I, I, I think that I always throw the caution flag um, about running these things up the pole. Yeah. Um, I find that the, the, the only problem I have with it is people actually give you their opinion. <laughs> when you do that, and you might have a hundred, you know, answers. I, I say pick, a handful of trusted colleagues. Yeah. yeah. And um, and then once you decide on a position statement, and Patricia, you said something very important at the beginning of this when we initially sat down. A positioning statement can morph over time. Mm. In the mid-2000s, when we had a terrible uh, economy, problem with the economy, I said, book more business, make more money, and avoid costly mistakes. Mm. And then I changed that when we came out of that, and as technology gave us more ways to repurpose our content, to fully monetize your intellectual property. Mm. In other words, you know, have ancillary streams of income, if you will. Good. Um, but I do, I do think that it, it can morph over time. But when you decide on a positioning statement, say it a hundred times a day for a week so that you sound it coming from your subconscious. You don't have to think to say it. It doesn't sound like you're reading it. And then leave yourself a voicemail mm. saying it and see how you sound. Um, but I do think that, that uh, you're right. You want to practice it say it and use it 
for everything, everything. And Lois, before we got on online, we were talking about the question that we both get, especially with newer or intermediate speakers. We don't they, they we don't have a book yet. Uh, we have a certain expertise. We've had some successful engagements. We might still have our day job, but we we are planning and you plan to go full time. I kept my hairstyling salon seven years after I made the commitment to become a speaker. Yeah. You don't want to quit the day job till you can feed your family, right. even if your family is only you and your dog. That's right. Yeah. So what do you charge? And we, which is a very difficult question to answer, but at least your positioning statement would help you perhaps charge more while you are developing your presentation skills if people want the outcome, which is why yeah. it's so important. Uh, Lois, you said that's a question I don't like answering. So do you want to give any comments with, because this is not NSA, we can yeah. talk money in a way you couldn't if this was an NSA chapter. Uh, any, know, it, any general guidelines? I think it's it's a dif difficult question to ask. To ask it, what what it depends upon is this: what is your area of expertise? The first thing you've got to know is it marketable? Hmm. Do people have businesses historically paid for this kind of program? And you can do that by by doing an online search. Yeah. If it is marketable, and you've gotten some experience. Um, uh, giving it, get to Toastmasters, by the way. I call Toastmasters the off-broad way of speaking. Get in there and practice. Then go on Fripp VT, virtual. Before Then you can hire her when you get really successful. But um, when you feel that you have a speech and you, you have some experience, get out there. People who tell me they want to speak, I say then get out there and speak. Yeah. Go to your local business journal. Open it up. Inside is a calendar of events that gives you every meeting that's taking place in your hometown in the next week. And if it's a luncheon, they will let you know whether they're, they use a speaker for a 20 to 30 minute program. If they do call and say, I have a program, I work with organizations like yours who want to yada, 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 and I have a program, I'd love to come in and give it to your group. If you like what you hear, I'd love a testimonial saying you were happy. Then your job is to leverage a few of those testimonials into something that pays. And when you're first asking for money, don't ask for too much. It's easier to go up in fee and it can kill you to go down. So you might want to ask $500, $750, $1,000. This depends upon your experience, your expertise. And you know, in your in your speech, your experience is going to drive the stories that you have to tell. So do you have some great stories that come organically as a result of your own experience? And the more of those you have, I think then that's when your fee goes up. What do you think, Patricia? Well, yes. And my point of view, and I just opened the page to fee or not to fee, which is pay. Uh, 50, uh, 57, 8, 9, 59. <laughs> yeah, it's a fear number. My philosophy is there is no, there are no free speeches because one, you practice your speech. Two, you have visibility in the community because every group you speak for, whether it's for free or fee, is going to advertise the meeting and who they're speaking to. That's true. You have the opportunity to network with new people. And within your speech, you have stories about your expertise. And somebody else reads your introduction. And what I used to do, because this is how I started, and all I would do a drawing and whoever I pulled out could have a free ha hairstyle at my salon. And I knew that they'd all go back and everyone say, oh, well, you went to Miss Fritz for a haircut. Let's see how you look like. So it was good maximizing. And yeah, then, of course, and that was before we had contact management systems, right. LinkedIn. 
So I had then cards that I could follow up and, and write a note. But that is a good way. So there's no free speech. You, you do get experience. Now, the first of my free speech, I was paid to speak in the hairstyling industry, but my first paid speeches, people came up at those events. The first person at the Oakland appliance dealers said, what would you charge? I said, $50. He heard me speak at another group years later. And next, he said, oh, what would you charge to say that to the Oakland appliance dealers? I said, 5000 that time. And he paid it. There you go. And in fact, what I will put a link into our group, I have an eight-minute uh, video of how I got started. I have it on YouTube. And I will link it in as a follow-up. Now, I'll ask you, we, we promised our people to keep this relatively short as it's streaming live. I know we'll have another of these conversations and I'm going to now just opened it at any page. And this is page 95. Do you need a book? Um, the answer is no. Uh, if, if you are starting out and you don't have a book, don't rush to do a book. I always tell people you've got to live with your expertise and live with your material a little bit. Uh, before I think that you put it in print. But what you should have is you should start a blog tomorrow or today. Because a blog, I call my blog my intellectual property on parade. Yes. It lets people know I can do a deep dive in a number of areas, even if I don't have a book. So you can have a blog. You can send a blog post to a prospect and say, here's an example of something I cover in one of my programs. And then, uh, you know, eventually uh, my book is really my blog. Uh, I did have to go back and rewrite 90 percent of it. But it, it's how I it's how I organized my book based upon my blog post. So a blog is a great thing. And start it as soon as you can. Five hundred to eight hundred words on one thought, a single thought. And what Shep does, and I do to, to a certain extent as well, you can record the video in YouTube. So what we do with our weekly mailings, we usually have, this is the script of it. This is me saying it, whatever you like. And then we repurpose some of these at different times in the blog. Because apparently... Uh, now, video blogs are getting a lot more attention, even sometimes than scripting blogs. All right, Paul, do we have <clears throat> any questions from our viewing audience? Absolutely. We have Trevor. Now, his is a statement and a follow-up question. So if you need me to reread some part of it, let me know. My current statement describes the benefit to audience members. So here it goes. I work with small business owners who want to advertise, automate, and delegate effectively so they can earn more working less. And so he's, his follow-up is, this seems right for associations, but what if I'm being called by Amway or Remax? Should the benefit be to the corporation and not the individual salesperson? For example, I work with organizations who want to who want better retention and more sales from their independent reps and agents. Well, this, this is an example where you might want to say, Trevor, I work with people who want to. Um, if you want to work with individuals as well as groups, small businesses, large businesses, here's the reality. A positioning statement cannot and should not speak to everyone. So if you're saying I want to work with small businesses, I want to work with multi-thousand uh, arena Amway events, you can't appeal to everyone. So I'd suggest that that um, you, you decide on language that um, would... That, that isn't too narrow, but fits everyone. And I'm going to caution you with small business because my sense is that it's hard to make a living speaking to small business. They mm -hmm. just don't uh, pay as much. Um, I, I always tell anyone who has a good business speech, the corporate and association market is where you want to live because that's where you have the best chance of making money. And all of the outcomes, Trevor, that you gave, are important to businesses of any size. Yeah. 
And when you speak for associations, associations are made up of small, medium and large organizations that have an affiliation with the business in NSA. We yes. have mom and pop. We have beginner, intermediate, advanced. And we have people who run training companies. And and then we have a, a few of our friends who make uh, millions of dollars with very small practices. Yes. Uh, obviously a lot smarter than I am. Well, yeah, and me. Good. But it's true. Paul, you have another. I shouldn't be chatting on to Lois if we've got questions to answer. Just one more from Robin, um, Robin Barnhart. I work with people who want to gain the silent advantage by understanding their body language. Mm. I don't like the silent advantage. Um, if mm. you're a speaker, don't use the word silent in your positioning statement. <laughs> That would be one of my suggestions, Robin. Um, I, you know, I would be, Robin, I think I would be more inclined to say, um, I work with organizations that want to gain a competitive advantage by learning to read body language. Something like that, I think would be stronger for you. Hmm. Good. That's all we have. All right, Lois. I know we can do this again in in a couple of months. You're always available. I look and forward to it. If, if people would like to email Lois, it is Lois at bookmorebusiness dot com, and on your website, Book More Business, they can order your book. And what is the enormous investment? The enormous investment is nineteen ninety nine, Patricia. Perfect. Plus shipping. Uh, plus shipping, or you can order on Amazon. If you're an Amazon Prime member, you can order on Amazon and get the shipping free. Uh, if you're not, I'm a great believer. Always buy it from the speaker. Thank you. Chances are you're going to make more money, and that's what you are going to encourage other people to do for you. So thank you very much, whether you're watching this live or the replay. Uh, please feel free to on uh, on the Facebook group, write any questions and uh, being respectful. Lois is very good at answering your questions within our groups. Ideally, you will make them short and specific <laughs> enough that everyone can get value from them. So with that, Lois. Uh, until next time, and you are speaking for the Northern California National Speakers Association when I'm speaking for Columbus NSA. And Did I missed you in May, Vegas? Is, is it May the 12th? Uh, yes. Um, yes, it's May the 12th, and I'll, I'll be at the uh, Mountain Chapter in uh, April. All right. Very good. Because I know a lot of our members, Trevor, Trevor, now you you certainly have the opportunity to uh, meet Lois and hear a whole program at our chapter. So with that, until next time, we'll see you online. Thanks, Prip. Thank you. And thanks, Paul. Bye, Paul.